Hello and welcome to episode 56 of SoccerCraft. In the last episode, we did a lot of stuff, but the main thing being finishing up the outer wall of Bossing Say. And in this episode, I want to look outside the wall and see what we're going to do out here. Now, I know a few episodes ago, I talked about my plans to put my world zoo out here where we collect up all the mobs, hostile and friendly, and find a spot for them. But that's not what I want to work on today. I've got plans for what's going to become the coolest thing that we have in our world. And a lot of it is due to inspiration from Twitch. You see, a lot of the streamers that I'm watching nowadays on Twitch in the hardcore Minecraft community are talking about building up some sort of coliseum. And now this isn't just any coliseum, it's a really cool arena where you can fight battles against illagers. Yep, that's right, it is sort of like a raid farm. But it's no normal raid farm because you fight everything manually and nothing's really automated, which makes everything way more fun. Actually, there is going to be a lot of automation in it. Yeah, yeah, there's going to be automation. And before I get too far in the video, I want to say that all of the coliseums that people are building are really based off the guy 1604 on Twitch. Make sure you go check him out. There's definitely a link down in the description. And maybe you can figure out he, how he built his coliseum. Over the next few episodes, we're planning on going over all of the mechanics that go into this really, really fun minigame. And then we're going to build it up to look like something that will resemble the Daily Training Headquarters. So it's going to be a big old building, going to try to make it look a little bit fancy, and then we're going to have battles inside. Sounds like fun, right? And if you think a minigame to bully pillagers sounds like fun, make sure you smack that like button. Now, let's hop into a time lapse of us digging a hole somewhere around here for us to put a bunch of redstone in that will go underneath the Colosseum in the future. Welcome back. I've got a big old hole to put a bunch of redstone in, and honestly, I dug this hole way too big. But that's completely fine. I've got some other plans for what we can put under this coliseum in the future where having this already dug out is kind of going to be nice. And while I was digging it out, I was trying to think of how I want the coliseum to be shaped. And then I ended up going to mini HUD, creating a whole bunch of thing circles to connect up to each other, which kind of makes the final shape. And if I turn on the rendering, you can see it here. This is what I want the coliseum to look like. It's kind of like kind of like stadium shaped here with the long oval and then I got two more circles in here to kind of give like a front and a back entrance to the Colosseum kind of vibe and I'm really liking the shape that I've gotten so far. Now I don't plan on building the actual decoration for the Colosseum in this episode but I want to get an outline of it down so we can figure out where the floor is going to be because the floor is going to determine where a lot of the redstone is placed. And the outline is in place and looking good. And I actually went into a creative world, came up with an idea for what I want to do for the floor here. And I collected all the materials here. So I'm going to go ahead, go into a time lapse, get this floor built, and then we'll bring you guys back and start looking at the redstone for the Colosseum. Welcome back! We got the floor in place and I am in love with the design. As you can see from up here, it's looking great. We got a ton of black stone around. We got the Dai Li symbol in the center, which I think looks really awesome. And I've started putting dispensers around, which is just getting the start of the redstone in place. And now that we have the floor and these dispensers in place, maybe it's about time we start looking at the redstone. Now I have a little hole over here to get underneath and I made sure that everything underneath that floor was obsidian. So if anything happens, all of the redstone will eventually be protected. But yeah, we've got just a bunch of um, 
stuff here letting us know where all the dispensers are and basically these are going to be some arrow dispensers. Actually, you know what? How about we hop into my creative world where I can show you all the traps that I'm planning on using in this raid coliseum. And here's my little trap setup I have right here. So basically, there's going to be events that happen during the raid. One of them being arrows being shot off from the ground. Another one of them being arrows launched across the field. And another one being rockets being shot out to try to damage either the player or the illagers. If I come up and flip this trapdoor, we can see it in action. The first two here are the launchers, so you can see them launching the arrows right across the field. And then we have just a bunch of, I guess, floor arrows, which will shoot up and then fall back down. And we have a few rocket launchers here. Let me set it off again so we can watch it properly in action. Yeah, so yeah, we're going to try to install this type of stuff underneath the Colosseum using redstone. I'll bring you guys back to show how everything's connected. All right, here we go. We have some of the redstone in place. I've got here are going to be our fireworks dispensers on the corners here. These are the ground arrow dispensers. And on the end here, we also have the arrow launchers. Now, I've only actually set up the arrow launchers to test because you, you kind of want to make sure the timing's right. But I'm pretty sure everything else is going to work when we wire everything up in the end. But uh, I noticed while working with these arrow launchers that it's not 100% reliable. Uh, every once in a while, it won't launch one of the arrows. Oh, there's an example of it now. And uh, half of them kind of get sent to the middle. But I think it is... That out, neither of those worked, but... There we go. Yeah, I think it is going to still be a really cool little addition to this uh, arena. I think I've also noticed that the other side is a lot more reliable and I have no idea why, but it's still really cool. Now, if we come below, we can look at the redstone. Over here, I just have a simple monostable circuit to uh, set off these, but I'm going to change this up when we wire everything up properly. But over here we have an observer chain which goes to all of the floor arrow dispensers and shoots them up into the air. Over here we have a few slots that just lead some wiring out to the rocket dispensers. And yeah, basically we have our typical arrow launcher stuff over here. Now the next thing we need to think about is probably going a little bit below this glass and building up some sort of timing system which decides which event goes off when. And here is the brain of the mini game. So this is the timing system that we were just talking about and it all starts here with the Etho Hopper Clock. I'm going to do my best to explain it. It is all uh, really simple redstone actually. I know it's kind of ironic having a, a mechanism like this and saying it's simple redstone, but it really is. If you break it down into parts, we have an Etho Hopper Clock as the timer of the system and this goes to two spots. Right over here it goes to this dropper which will spit out one of the type of carpets, which will go to each line, which has each its own separate purpose. So for example, the orange will go over here, the pink will go over here, the purple will go here. Um, that's supposed to be teal. The magenta goes back over here and the red is gonna come up to this last line here. So whenever one of these gets set off here, actually let me turn the system on so you can see it running. So we'll see a piece of carpet will pop out here and then go along and get sucked up by one of these item sorters and it will send a pulse off based on whatever color that is and that will eventually activate one of the events in the arena. And then this second line comes down below and times it so that there's enough time for the carpet get, to get down into the droppers below and it kind of just sends it back up into the system so we kind of still always have almost full or nearly full carpets in the system and we don't really ever have to come and restock that. So now at this point, all I really need to do to get this place working is connect up all of these redstone lines to wherever it needs to go. And yeah, let's go do that. And here we are down in the brain with everything connected, but I'm actually going to drink a night vision potion so you guys can see it this time. Oh, that's much, much better. All right, so yeah, back off. We're here at the hopper clock. It sends off, does all of this stuff, but now all of the circuits are connected. So you can see the orange line runs up to the first uh, arrow launcher. The purple line runs up to the rocket launchers. 
and the pink line runs up to the floor arrow launchers and it's the pretty much the same thing on the other side so we now have all these set up here let me turn it on and we'll run a test so we can see if everything is properly running so I set up this platform up here so I could see all of the stadium and at, you can see the first event go off just below me there with some arrows coming out of the ground and let's see what else happens. Oh, there's some rockets coming out from the front there. So we've got at least two of them set up. I wonder what's going to be next. The uh, timer right now is set to a really short amount of time so that we can test everything. Um, you can see that it is completely random what happens. We're Getting the same one as before. And there we go. We got a arrow launch as well. So it looks like pretty much everything is working. And I'm really happy, really, really happy with how this uh, thing came together. The brain is looking really cool together. It looks like, like a circuit board or something. I don't know. I think that kind of stuff in Minecraft looks really, really cool. So now that we've got all the redstone in place, we need to start thinking about where we're going to put the villager that will trigger the raid for the Colosseum. And with what I know about raid spawning mechanics, you need to walk within a 3x3 three three chunk area. So actually if we press F3 and G, that'll bring up our chunk borders. So each one of these is a chunk. So say we had the villager in this chunk. If we walked into any chunk that kind of touches the border of this, it would start the raid. So if we wanted to start the raid when we got to the middle of the farm, or well not farm, of the arena, this could be a good spot for it. But I kind of am thinking maybe wonder if we put them back here. That means I can enter from that side, walk to the middle, and then trigger the raid when I'm ready. Because at this point I would have to just barely pass the middle. Yeah, let's try the villager in this chunk and see how that goes. So I'm going to set up a little home for them. Um, you need to have the villager to, I believe, have a profession and to have a claimed bed. So I just need to give that to a villager. Cart a villager down here and we'll uh, maybe run a test raid to see where the villager spawns. Now that we have the villager underneath the farm, we need to do a little bit of spawn proofing up above to control where the pillagers are going to be spawning. You see, pillagers are actually really easy to control their spawns. The one spawning mechanic that we're going to manipulate is the fact that they have to spawn on the topmost block in the world. So we could very easily control it so they just spawn on this center circle here by putting a glass ceiling way up at build height so that we can't even see it here but it will trick this into thinking that none of the blackstone area would be spawnable space because it wouldn't be the topmost block in the world. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. So now my next step is to open up mini HUD. I'll enable the last cylinder that's the centerpiece there and we'll just put like 250 on there and that should no let's just go let's just go a solid 400 and that will definitely put this to build height so we're gonna have to build a pillar all the way up here with the new extra high build height it's kind of crazy how high up this is um so yeah we're gonna have to build a pillar all the way up to here and then we're gonna start branching out from here with glass and that's going to stop all of the spawns from the pillager raid, except for in the center of the Colosseum. And then while we're up here, we're actually also going to expand it over into these areas and make sure that we're covering everywhere that the snow is hitting, because that's also going to block the snow from being able to land on the wall 
or down on the grass down here where I don't want it to look like a snowy terrain. So let's hop into yet another time lapse of me, I guess, making a giant glass ceiling. Welcome back. We have our glass roof in place with the circle down just above the circle to allow the illagers to spawn there. But while I was building this up, I realized that I was basing it off the center here and I needed it to be based off where the villager is over there. So we ended up with a really weird shaped circle. It's actually really hard to see unless I zoom in, but you can kind of see the weird hump that's up at the front of it. And then it's just kind of just a regular circle from there. I had to open up mini HUD and create a few cylinders. So if I enable this one, if we turn it on, you can see both of them. So they're both sur uh, surrounding us here. One of them is based on the center piece right here. And then another circle is probably based on somewhere around where that black uh, carpet is there. And together, if we go way up, you can kind of see how off the mark I was. So if we quickly just disable this one and then... Oh, <laughs> I forgot about the glass roof. I almost died. Okay, all right, here we go. This is the radius of where the pillager should be able to spawn. So I've covered all of this with glass, making it so that it should force them into the circle. So I think now the only thing to do is test it by starting a raid. But really quickly first, I just want to say if you're looking to create a Colosseum for yourself, I believe it's about a radius of 70 blocks. So you can see right here I have it set to radius 71 just to make sure that it goes out just one block farther and won't allow any illagers spawning on the outside of this radius because I don't really want to have to come back up here and expand out this giant donut. Now let's go get Bad Omen. All right, so I have Bad Omen. I've got a chest plate on my hot bar so we can get ready to do some battling. Let's see if this Colosseum is going to work. So we step into the Colosseum and nothing's happening yet. But as we walk towards the center, we should see the raid bar start to fill up soon. Hopefully. Okay, so it looks like I just have the villager a little bit too low, but the raid is working. I'm going to have to move him up a little bit. Oh, I don't have my elytra on. Let's get back up there. Get ready to get going with this raid. Are they all spawning in the middle? It looks like they all spawned in the middle. All right, let's beat up some pillagers and see how this goes. Looks like we'll have a little bit of troubleshooting to do. And our first raid in the Colosseum's done, and I've got to say, it was probably one of the weirdest raids I ever did. Can you guys leave me alone? <laughs> um, <laughs> basically, for some reason, for most of that raid, most of the mobs didn't even want to fight me, unless they were vexes. Get out of here. Yeah, basically, only the vexes and the ravagers kind of wanted to attack me at all. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of troubleshooting, see if I can figure out where that is. And we're going to move the villager up a little bit so that hopefully I actually do start a raid while on the surface of the Colosseum. So I moved the villager up a whole bunch and did another test raid and everything's working perfectly. The illagers were attacking me now so now I'm going to do one more test but we're actually going to turn on the system and have a few of the things triggering. I'm just gonna probably increase the timer to more than like 10 seconds. Thank you. 
Well, if that wasn't some of the most fun I've ever had playing Minecraft, I don't know what is. So basically, that just means that everything seems to be working. Uh, we have the raid spawning exactly in the center. I'm able to fight the guys and they'll fight back. All of the traps seem to work. And this Colosseum is off to a really, really great start. And if you're enjoying this Colosseum and want to see more of them, I know a bunch of great content creators who are making their own versions. So you can check out the guy 1604 Linksy, and Douglas Gordo MC, just to name a few. Now, there definitely is still going to be a lot of tweaking with the settings of this minigame, but it is so much fun and it's working so great. I'm really happy with it and unfortunately, this is all the time that I have to work on it in today's episode. In the next episode, we're going to be looking at doing some extra work on this Colosseum, making it even cooler and getting some more decoration up for it. If you guys enjoyed today's episode, please make sure you leave a like and consider subscribing. I'll see you guys next time. Water Tribe, out.